is Robbie Rodriguez, and I'll uh, say a couple words about myself and then turn it over to my co-presenter. How I got into the um, area of generational change in the nonprofit sector, which is what we're going to talk about uh, here today, uh, and how it impacts and, and intersects with, with your work as, as grant makers and philanthropists, uh, is that uh, generational change happened to me, and it happened to the organization that I work for um, about six years ago. It was also experiencing a generational shift uh, in the leadership of the organization. So all the board members were 50 or over. Uh, one, in fact, was, a, was a, an octogenarian. Um, <laughs> myself and uh, half the staff were under 30. And so we had very different ideas about how change happened. I would argue that by and large, most the, the sector in general uh, is really not equipped to deal, uh, inherently equipped to deal with what we're seeing uh, happening in, uh, today. Welcome everyone, my name is Marisa Aurora, I'm with the San Diego Foundation, I manage the environment program there, and I first uh, became interested in this um, when I moved to San Diego from the Bay Area, and just really looking at the differences in culture from one office to the other. So this is what we're going to do today, uh, so by the time we leave, we've already done introductions, we're going to actually talk about who the generations are in the workforce today, and so we'll give some broad and general definitions of, of, of who we're actually talking about. We'll do a quick and fun exercise that will help us debunk the myths that we have of one another uh, and help us learn what we think of one another. Um, we'll go over some of our findings and looking at the frames uh, in which we view the challenge of generational change, uh, the role that we can play in overcoming those challenges, and then we'll end with some recommendations in terms of what can we do once we leave uh, this room here today. Um, the economic downturn has definitely changed the course of our sector. What we're seeing is that um, you know, our baby boomers have to stay longer in their positions because they have to recover assets. I, mean, you, I think everybody in this room probably knows of stories of this. At the same time, what we're seeing is a bottleneck of leadership. So there's young people that are, we're getting ready to emerge into leadership positions that, that those positions now don't exist. We're gonna do an exercise now and I think what we usually do and this exercise is in the book and there are a couple of other things to help um, to flesh out some of what we think the differences are and how we move through those differences uh, is to get an understanding of what what we think of each other uh, as as various generations so if you're a boomer or veteran of change if you can come to this side of the room and if you're Gen X or millennial uh, go to that side of the room Talk about what you think the other generations think of you. Not like that. We're greeting that. Because we are. 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 <laughs> we just want to go around and, and pick a few things that you guys said about each of them. So we'll start uh, over here with the Xers. What were a couple of things that you thought the baby boomers uh, uh, thought of you all? Uh, that were fat savers and extravagant, uh, sort of selfish and what's in it for me, not very committed. Uh, Job jumpers, slackers. Okay, uh, all right. That we've had it good. Okay. As they become increasingly our bosses, we're finding that less and less. <laughs> <laughs> what did you guys write that they thought about you? Uh, wondering when you guys are moving on. <laughs> <laughs> and the answer is uh, not for a while. Um, there is a sense positively where we feel that there is some of them, there are among some of them, they do appreciate the breadth of experience of knowledge, the breadth of experience and knowledge among the, the boomers. Um, we feel that the boomers move um, more slowly than younger generations, both sometimes physically actually and with regard to technology. Um, CS is sappy about issues of loyalty, uh, boomers seeing the younger generations as 
less concerned about, less committed to, those kinds of things. More of the, for me, I've, I'm the father of four millennials, all of whom have a major global view of the world, much more so than I did. A lot of a lot of the boomers, as we mentioned today, and veterans of change were were people that were involved, like during the civil rights movement, the presidency of Kennedy, uh, you know, sending a man to the moon, uh, the women's liberation movement, and so on and so forth. And so there were great social changes that happened during that time period that they often take credit for, even if they themselves were not involved in any of those things. Then, uh, then what happened with boomers um, is that they went from this. Whether or not they were involved in those movements and they were uh, started organizations, they went from mission. So they're very passionate about a cause uh, or a reason of why they became active in promoting social change to management of actual organizations. So we have people who didn't necessarily learn how to like go to school to run organizations, but they learned by doing. And then lastly, um, uh, one of the things that we're finding is that there's a lot of anxiety about the future. Generation X, some um, general findings uh, uh, are that we, this is the first generation, at least in the nonprofit sector, that did start to go to school where programs were available uh, in terms of nonprofit management. And so a lot of them came into the sector because they felt passionately about something, and that was mentioned today uh, in the opening remarks. Um, and they brought real hard skills in terms of how to work in the nonprofit sector. Generation X brings up a lot in terms of um, establishing uh, and talking about more work personal life divide. So really trying to find a healthy balance between uh, their work life and their personal life. And there's a question of, as to whether or not, it's an actual question whether or not younger generation leaders are interested in leading organizations. So moving on to the millennials, this is um, obvious. Uh, they're technological natives. But it's important to not only think of them in terms of technologies. Millennials are the most diverse generation. That was also spoke about, spoken about um, on the panel today. Uh, you know, the, the comment by Deanna that here in San Diego, by 2030, one out of every two children being born um, will be Latinos. Um, by 2042, uh, the U.S. as a country will be a majority-minority country. Um, and then there's all that demographic shifts and changes happening. That's already true for this generation. But it's not just tr true in terms of race and ethnicity. It's also true in terms of um, gender, in terms of sexuality. When you're thinking about um, uh, the younger generation taking over, let's say, uh, the, the foundation, how is that diversity being reflected uh, in terms of how we reach out and, and bring in uh, younger people? So there's an interesting statistic, 16 to 24 year olds are decreasing in the workforce as they are delaying their entrance into it. Um, and what essentially what they're doing is staying in school longer, um, living at home or going back home. So I'd like to bring your attention to um, inside your folders. San Diego Grantmakers has very generously given everybody a copy of their guiding principles. And Robbie spoke about diversity, and I want to talk about that a little bit more. So if you look at number seven, um, I won't read the statement for you, but this is a commitment on, be on behalf of San Diego Grantmakers to really look at this in specifically the local sector, nonprofits and philanthropy. So how we frame uh, the problem of generational change uh, leads us to different solutions. So we start off with this crisis, the, 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 the first crisis, the crisis of 2007. The boomers are leaving and no one's going to take their place. So if that's the way, if that's true for you, that, um, that there is, that boomers are leaving, that you are f fearful of a leadership deficit, then we need to do succession planning, and there's a whole, uh, any Casey Foundation has done, has a whole program around executive transition management. There's a lot more literature and tools and consultants that specialize in this uh, succession planning. And we also build, need to build a pipeline of new leaders. So that's the crisis. The other way that we can look at this is that the, the boomers are not leaving. So there's, there's no room at the top. So if that's the problem, uh, then what we can do is look at models that, uh, that share power um, 
or help make it possible for older generations to leave or change positions. It's the position, duh. Uh, younger leaders aren't in interested in the top job because they think that it's unsustainable. One of the things that we could um, think about doing is uh, providing support to new leaders, um, but, but more importantly, really rethink the executive director role. Recognition. Um, so one of the things that, that we found is that younger leaders may not look and act the same as older leaders. The, the leadership needs might be right under your nose, but if, you're, if you have a mental model of it, um, so we really need to check what our assumptions are. Um, and younger people should uh, try to assume more leadership. Another organizational form is possible. So this I sort of already mentioned. Organizations in the future might operate differently uh, than they do now. So one of the things that's important to note is, that, is to understand that we are in transition um, and that re to recognize that change is messy and hard sometimes. And to, um, to have, you know, try and create some space to, to talk to grantees or within your own institutions about what are the challenges going on? So what can we do? Um, first, open, this, open the discussion and realize that change affects everyone. Examine our assumptions and encourage honest communication. Uh, offer trust. Uh, to do an inventory as organizations, what we can do and encourage grantees to do, um, but also do it in our own institutions, um, is look at like who are the people, the positions, the organizational culture that's going to support multi-generation leadership and actually have conversations about the future. Along with that, which I already mentioned, um, the field of executive transition management, you can make a plan, succession plan, and it really provides an opportunity to step back and reassess the organization. And then let's, you know, build for the future. So um, look at leadership development models, look at diversity uh, in leadership, make more clear to people coming into work for us, what the expectation and opportunities are. This is something that we don't do enough generally, um, is just celebrate leadership. Um, it's easier to leave a position when you feel appreciated uh, and that you know you've done a good job. Well, thank you everybody.